Welcome to ProjaCAD 3D Basics. This is Basics of 3D Solids Editing. To find links to any downloadable resources available for this video, make sure to check the description box below. For this video, I'll be using a new blank drawing, which I have already opened. I'll be using the Ribbon Full workspace. So that we can better visualize the solids I'm going to be editing, I'll set my view to Southwest Isometric and the visual style to Conceptual. The 3D solids we've learned to create thus far are really just building blocks to help you create more complex objects. In this video, we'll be learning about the editing tools on the left side of the solid editing panel. I'll be pasting in various objects that I have ready for my demonstrations. Here, I have a 2 inch square box with a cylinder sitting on the top plane. The first editing tool is called Union. It takes multiple 3D objects and turns them into a single object. I'll launch Union and I'm prompted for the objects to join together. Here I only have two so I'll select them with a crossing window, pressing Enter to end the selection. Now the box and cylinder are joined together into a single object. For the next tool, I'm going to bring in another box and cylinder, but this time the cylinder crosses through both the top and bottom planes of the box. This tool is called Subtract, and is certainly the most common method to make holes, which is what we want to do. In other words, I want to subtract the cylinder from the box. I'll launch the Subtract command. Make note of the prompt, as it does matter which object gets selected first. It's asking for the object to subtract from. I'll select the box and press enter to end selection. The prompt changes to ask for the object to subtract. I'll select the cylinder, press enter, and my hole is created. I'll orbit around a bit to better show the newly created hole. I'll pop in my next set of objects for the intersect command. It's still my box and cylinder, but this time the cylinder is aligned with a corner of the box. I'll quickly switch to a top view to better visualize just where the cylinder is. Then I'll return to the isometric view I was in. I'll launch the intersect command. Like Union, it prompts for all of the objects you want to include in the intersection. Again, I'll use a crossing selection window. I'm finished selecting, so I'll press Enter to execute the command. Only the parts of the solid that intersect each other remain as a 3D solid. Our next editing tool is called Slice. For this, I'll bring back the separate box and cylinder I used for Subtract. I'll leave them separate just to demonstrate that Slice will work on all items that cross your slicing plane. I'll launch Slice and select both objects as the prompt asks me to do. I'm finished selecting, so I'll press Enter. I'm then prompted for a start point of my starting plane. Using a midpoint e-snap, I'll select the middle of the bottom right edge of the box. Next, I'm prompted for the second point of my slicing plane. With ortho mode enabled, I'll move my mouse to select a point in space on the other side of the box. The slice is now calculated, and you have the choice to keep either side or keep both sides. Per our prompt, I'll click in space on the right side of our objects. When I do, the left side is removed, leaving just the right side. Let's take this a step further by subtracting the cylinder. I'll run the command, select the box, then the cylinder. Perhaps we're further on track for the shape we need. I'll leave this here and return to it later. Next up is a command called interfere. It creates a new 3D solid from the common volume of two or more solids. I'll use the separate box and cylinder again. Launching the interfere command, it prompts me for the first set of objects. I'll select the box and press enter. I'm then prompted to select the second set. I'll select the cylinder and again press enter. I'll then be asked if I want to create solids. I'll say yes. Next, I'm asked if I want to highlight intersecting objects. Again, I'll say yes. I'll choose exit for the final answer. My new solid is within the box, so I'll move the box out of the way. Now, the new solid is within the cylinder. Using Selection Cycling, 
I'll choose the new object and move it to reveal the interference calculation. The next two editing commands are related and appear in the same pulldown. The first one is fillet, which applies a rounding to an edge. I'll launch fillet, select the upper right edge as prompted, pressing enter when I'm done. I could press enter again to accept, but I want to verify my radius, so I'll arrow down and choose radius. I want it to be 0.5, so I'll type that in, enter again to accept, then enter to create the fillet. I'll use orbit to better see the other side of my box. And now I'll launch chamfer, which slices off a straight edge. Again, I'll select an edge and press enter. I want to make sure this is a 0.5 chamfer, so like the fillet, I'll arrow down. This time the prompt reads distance. You can set the distance for both faces, so I'll have an extra distance question. It defaults to the first distance, so I'll just accept that. Pressing enter to execute the chamfer, I see my results on the box. Armed with what we know now about fillets, let's return to our previous object. Perhaps our design says that our object is curved, not square. I'll use fillet to accomplish this. I'll select the vertical edge on the right, specify a one inch fillet, and apply it. I'll do it again to the opposite edge. And now I have a curved object that I need to continue my design. You can find out more information, download their 30-day free trial, or purchase your own ProjectCAD license at www.projectcad.com.